Welcome back once again to F2F5 in beautiful, sunny Omaha, Nebraska. Are you guys excited to be here? Absolutely. Yeah. Have you been here before? We've yep. been here before. It's a fun, fun show, isn't it? Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I'm joined by a couple of farmers and an FBN corn products expert. Uh, Andy, you want to talk a little bit about your role within the company? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, my name is Andy Ackley. I'm the corn product expert um, here at FBN, so I, I manage the corn portfolio. Um, work with our independent breeders, bringing new genetics uh, into the lineup and working with farmers trying to find the right products for their farms. Yeah, FBN has taken a, a really unique approach to seed and a bold move by getting into it. And we've been talking about that in the last couple of segments. Um, we got a couple farmers here who, who have grown conventional corn, uh, F2F conventional corn. We got Neil, who is a farmer in Kansas. Neil, you want to give us a, a background on your farm and what your experience was with trying some of that seed out? Yeah, you know, we, uh, we farm in east central Kansas and um, we've got a cow-calf operation, uh, you know, so we're, we're kind of diversified there. We have um, a lot of different types of soil in our area. We have some river bottom, we have some good creek ground, and then we have, you know, our upland. Um, and basically we kind of got turned on to the conventional corn basically for, uh, you know, returns on inputs. Um, you know, we always kind of joke, you know, in, in our area, we, uh, you know, we kind of have like the Illinois yields, but with a low battery, <laughs> you know, we get, we get a lot of diverse, uh, um, you know, rainfall, um, sometimes drought, you know, it's very unpredictable. It's very um, unstable. So this was a, a way that we could, could try to reduce costs, uh, you know, but still perform pretty well. Mm -hmm. And we also have Joe from Iowa who has grown some F2F conventional corn. Why don't you give us a, a background on your farm and what your experience was with uh, the conventional corn? Well, I guess we started going conventional corn a few years ago to save money on seed. And we had to use conventional chemicals anyway because so long as we're doing it, I figured why buy the traits. And then FBN came along last year and we tried a bunch of their corn and it turned out really good. It came out of the ground good. And so you had been growing conventional corn previously as well? <laughs> yes. And are you 100% conventional? Yes, at this 100%. Point? You are. Corn and beans this year. What part of Iowa are you in? North Iowa. North Iowa. Nine miles from the border. Have you uh, noticed a difference in the return on investment? Well, our last two years have been our best yields we've ever had. Best yields you've ever had? Conventional. So you've got your best yields you've ever had, and you're paying a $99 less. a bag for yeah. your seed? What about you, Neil, as far as an ROI is concerned? Yeah, um, you know, I, uh, I'm, pretty, I'm pretty particular, I'm pretty anal when it comes to um, uh, into investments on the inputs, uh, which is one of the, the, the reasons originally why we joined Farmers Business Network anyway was to save money on chemical. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and, and of course they just keep growing and growing and, and offering more. Um, and um, yeah, I mean, at, you know, as for last year was the first year that we um, uh, bought our conventional corn seed from uh, Farmers Business Network and we were extremely pleased with the yield, um, especially for the year that we had. Yeah, I think they've done a really good job of identifying hybrids that, that work. You know, it's, for me as a farmer, it was a little bit nerve wracking going into it and, and I wasn't nervous about trying conventional corn again, um, which we haven't had on our farm in several years, but I, that didn't make me nervous. What makes me nervous is jumping to a whole new company and something you don't know and trying that out and, and hoping that, that things go well. And what we saw was, um, Unfortunately, at the time, a year ago, they only had two, uh, two different varieties available in, in the conventional offerings. And uh, one of them just ended up being too late for our area. We tried it anyway. Uh, it didn't do well because it was too late. It was just too far north for it. Um, the other one we had, which is right in line with, with the uh, hybrids, the, the relative maturity range that we want to be in, and it turned out great. And, and when you look at it and say that was $99 a bag, um, even if it was off, uh, three to four bushels, which it was. It was drier than the other stuff in the field, and it, it was off about three or four bushels when you account for the shrink on it. And so when you look at how much cheaper that seed was, I mean, that's what it has to come down to as farmers. What is the return on investment? You know, that I mean, that is the bottom line. And when, when you work with, with farmers, Andy, is that what, what you get? I mean, is that is that more of what FBN likes to try to push, or is that what the farmers are saying they want? So, so really, the, the overall industry has kind of changed over the last few years, and, and we're really trying to change that conversation because most growers really get focused on, I, I've got to have yield because they're convinced that yield equals I'm, I'm more profitable. 
Right. Um, and really, and, and the industry at large has really convinced growers that yield, 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 that's all you need. But really at the end of the day, what, what I think that most people want to have is more money in their pocket, right? So we have to change that conversation back to, you know, is it the best yielding, but is it what made you the most money, right? So we need to be more profitable. So the opportunities we have to work with independent breeders, bring, pro bring products out that are competitive, that absolutely are, you know, that you're not taking a back seat on yield, but put more money in your pocket. That's what we want to do, and, and that's what we're trying to bring to, to our growers. Yeah, we, uh, we talk about that a lot, that no matter what you decide to do going forward, and no matter what you want to use to define sustainability or whatever you're doing with markets, if you're going to take advantage of a non-GMO market or an organic market or any niche market, there has to be some profitability there, mm -hmm. right? I mean, you have to have that or else you don't have a farm and pretty soon you won't have those options. And so, Neil, what's your thoughts going into next year? What are you guys planning on? Are you changing anything or what, I mean, what are you excited um, about? Yeah, you know, the um, I, I would like to try more, um, you know, more of the conventional conventional soybeans. Um, we're kind of limited uh, in, in the area that we're at with our, with our neighboring fields from the neighbors, you know, planting dicamba and, um, you know, endless mm -hmm. beans and everything like that. So um, we are going forward with conventional seed. We've already placed our order. Uh, we also do it to chop, uh, you know, for feed, for silage, for the, uh, for the cows. Um, also, and they have a pretty good, um, they have a pretty good list of, of you know, different types of, of corn, you know, to get height and, and everything. Sure. So we were, we were pretty successful with that last year and, um, and we're going to try it again. So are you able to get some premiums on the conventional corn? Um, you know, in our, in our area, um, uh, East Central Kansas, you know, we have um, uh, Edgerton, uh, they, um, they're trying to work, the grain uh, crop marketing's trying to work, you know, on a barge. Um, situation that will get us that um, that premium um, pretty much in our area at the moment um, there's not really too much it's it's difficult to find yeah. local markets yep. that's an, local. another thing that is uh, consistently inconsistent with with farming right it, yep. not everybody has access to the same market opportunities yep. Joe what about on your farm I mean going forward into into next year I'm gonna do about the same about the same you're going to continue to have that conventional seed there. Yep. Are you guys taking advantage of niche markets when it comes to corn or soybeans? In the 18, I did in corn. But okay. with overall 2,500 acres of corn, it was so hard keeping it segregated. What I did, I mean, it dried down a little bit drier. I decided I'm going to concentrate on getting my market on the beans and just grow corn. Cheapest number two corn I can grow to go to the ethanol plant. Okay. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. you're not necessarily taking advantage of a premium in the market with that no, corn, no. what you're taking advantage of is the overall ROI by paying less yes. for that corn. Well, 14-15, I planted the best seed you could get, 135 bucks an acre seed cost I had. The last two years, 85 bucks an acre, the seed, chemicals, fungicide, and insecticide. Wow. I mean, that's a big savings right there, and I'm getting just as good, if not better yields. Yeah, that's interesting. Is, is that consistent with what you hear when you work with the growers, Andy? Yeah, I, I mean it is. It, it's actually really shocking the uh, the difference in input costs. Just like mm -hmm. what Joe said. I mean, it. I, there are so many people that we work with that that are almost just overly appreciative of, man, the amount of money I was able to save year over year, um, and my production grow the same yield and put more money in my pocket. It's it's really outstanding. Mm -hmm. Are you finding that in general it's easy for the growers to make the transition or is it is it difficult? I mean, what, what's the feedback like on that? You know, I, it's, it's not easy. Um, we've, we've grown really accustomed to the easy button. Um, I, I'm gonna plant all my traits. Um, I'm, I'm gonna spend my weekends at the lake. I'm, you know, I'm gonna take it easy. Uh, I have no worry there. But, but what we're finding is, it, and, there was a point, there was a time and place where traits did a great job, and they still do. They're, they're great technology, but we've, we've reduced pest populations over most of the U.S. now to where they're just, they're just not as required. Mm -hmm. um, but, but growers are afraid to make that leap, right? It's, it's been an insurance policy that I've been used to for a very long time. It's scary. Um, but so if you just go out and monitor pests, do, do rootworm traps, do, you know, beetle counts, do... You'll, most growers are finding out they don't have the insects that they're protecting against, so they're just spending money they don't need. And one of the things that, that we're trying to say is, you know, use that conventional corn, 
do do the do your scouting and then if you have to do something there's there's a lot of options out there today that can that will enable you to control pests after they appear and and you're so much more money ahead by doing so so you just I guess what it sounds like you're saying is you just have to take a little bit of a different viewpoint yep. on the management of it. It's yep. just going to require some different management. Is that what you've seen, Joe? There's more time in the sprayer. More time in the sprayer. And then also, grass control is my main concern because we have woolly cut bad. And I want that control being burned because I do not want to have to spray a post grass killer on the corn because that things are bad. Yep. I remember back in the 80s and 90s. And another thing we're doing, we're bordering our fields with a little pickup sprayer. We've got a 20 foot boom, two late rows, growing outside of the field in the waterways. That's where all the grass pressure is at, and that's there, but. Sure. Yep. What about with you, Neil? I mean, have you had to really change the management a lot, or the or the chemicals, or? Um, you know, where we're at, we're pretty fortunate. You know, we don't we don't get into a lot of disease. Um, you know, with uh, as you typically would, you know, in the higher moisture, um, uh, like rootworms, you know, are, are are kind of an issue. But but that's about it. So we haven't really changed too much. It hasn't been a it hasn't been a crazy shift for no. you. Nope. Okay, what, uh, Andy, going forward, where do you think we go from here with conventional? I mean, do you think, do you think it continues to grow? Uh, do you think the, the traded varieties, the price comes down? Where, where do you think conventional goes from here? I, I honestly believe that we're actually on the beginning of conventional. You know, the, the, the new birth, the rebirth of conventional. Yeah, so, you know, go, go back um, to 1991, right, when, when our fathers were farming there weren't traded corns, right. and and then we went through all the traits, and now it's all the views almost like, you know, well if it's not traits, it's not new, it's not good technology. Well, it's not your dad's conventional corn. Mm -hmm. These are these are new genetics that independent breeders are are breeding every day, trying to find the right products. And I honestly believe that we are only at the very beginning of the rebirth of conventional corns. And, and having those genetics that are going to continue to be competitive with, with the multinationals in the industry today. Is that what you guys think as farmers? You I agree. The same you know, thing? it's um, the past couple years, you know, we've kind of been transitioning um, titles, I guess you could say, in the farm. Uh, my dad's 71 years old. And, you know, it was, you get to an age and it's like, well, that's just what you do. And that's how we do it. And, um, you know, so when we kind of struggle a little bit, you know, on butt heads, uh, you know, when it comes into that, but he's, he's to the point now where, um, where he's trusting my decisions, you know, we, we start small mm -hmm. and, and work our way up, um, you know, and it's, um, I think we've come a long way uh, with that. How, uh, maybe not so much him specifically, but the, the older generation who's been through, you know, probably grew conventional corn for years and years and years, and then, all of a sudden we've got Roundup corn that comes on the market and we've got this GM corn. I mean, what's the mentality of the older generation like that who sees conventional coming back around full circle and kind of a new push in that industry? What, what are your guys' thoughts on that? Well, uh, you know, he, uh, you know, when I, when I brought it up and especially, you know, for, um, for chopping, you know, for chopping purposes where you don't necessarily need, need the yield, um, he, uh, he was actually pretty, pretty open to it and you know of course we heard the stories well that's what we used to do and you know it used to it used to work um, you know but you kind of get on that that marketing bandwagon where this is what you have to have if you're going to succeed and be successful um, you know and so I, I think it's a good thing that um, that we're kind of coming back around Joe what what's your experience has been with that like the 18th first year went back to conventional a lot of the corns I planted are the same corn I planted here before that was traded was half price and seed cost. It was just, a, it was available the in The same it. corn, just didn't have the traits in it. Right. Yeah. And it did the same thing, I mean. Yep, yep. So what was the, what was the mentality, you think, from, from the neighbors when, I, I assume they know at this point, yeah. what's the feedback been? Do you have neighbors they're that have now us. started switching? Yeah. They're watching you. But there's a few that are switching, but they're talking yep. about it, but nobody's. Yep. What about with you, Neil? Yeah, um, you know, I, uh, um, I've got some, some neighboring friends and obviously, uh, you know, some friends up in Iowa and um, in Nebraska. And, you know, talking to them, telling that they, you know, at first kind of shake their head like, oh, you're making a mistake or, you know, or something like that without any proof really to back it up. I mean, they're, mm -hmm. you know, they're my age. They never planted conventional mm -hmm. corn or anything, yep. uh, you know, in their lifetime. So it's, it's kind of interesting, but they're... Um, uh, a friend of mine up in in Iowa is planting conventional corn this year, so yeah, he'll and see too, I guess. 
And I'll admit that when when the consumer started demanding non-GMO stuff, I yeah. thought it was horrible. You know, the way it, I still look at genetically modified crops and say that that is a really really effective tool when we Absolutely. need that. Mm -hmm. That is a a great thing. It's yep. it's powerful technology that when used right is better for the farmer, better for the environment, better mm -hmm. for the consumer. There's nothing wrong with the technology. Mm -hmm. But I panicked in thinking, you know, how are we going to farm if people don't want genetically modified yeah. seed? Well, then as time went by, you know, I got to thinking the same way. We can farm the same way. We just meet the demands. If that's mm -hmm. what they want, if that's what the consumer wants to see, if that's what they demand, then, then of course we can do that, right? The same way as if we had another really good third crop in the in the central Midwest come around. Mm -hmm. We can grow another crop. Mm -hmm. You know, we can learn how to do that. We're, we're good at adapting. So, yep. um, last question for Andy, where, where do you think we go from here? Um, not just specifically within FBN, but conventionally, I guess, maybe you already answered that. You just think that, that we're kind of in the rebirth, as you said. Yeah, I, I just, I feel like, you know, traits, and I, and I love what you said, you know, traits, they're an important tool if you have a problem um, that needs to be taken care of, traits are a great way to do it. They work good for what they do. And, and in those areas where we don't need that tool, right, we have the opportunity to use conventional. And I, I think traits have been so successful at, at cleaning up a lot of pests in the market um, that now it's time to kind of look at your operation and say, do I still need that trait or don't I? In those areas where you do, then absolutely, you know, continue to do that. In those traits where you, to areas where you don't, you have the opportunity to go to a conventional corn, a very good yielding, good yeah. quality mm -hmm. conventional corn. At least be open to the idea of it, absolutely. right? Absolutely. Sort of thinking outside the box by going back to yeah. where we were 30 years ago in a way, mm -hmm. yeah. right? But as you say, not your dad's conventional corn. Mm -hmm. Interesting conversation. Thank you guys for uh, joining me up here. I really Absolutely. appreciate it. Thank you.